What is up guys? Today the plan is to pop holes, set posts. That's the goal. And my name is Austin Ross. I've been a welder for 14 years here on this channel. I share tips and tricks for rig welders. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. So first things first, I gotta grab some ice out of the building here. We buy extra and put in this extra freezer in here, which is nice so I don't have to stop at the store. This morning I actually do have to stop anyway to pick up Roger. He's a guy that's gonna help me today. I met him on a job last year. A guy I was building fence for in central Oklahoma over here. He helps this guy from time to time. So anyway, I'm gonna use Roger to help me set some uh, hold string line and hold tape and then of course hold the, or I'll hold the post level most likely and he'll pour concrete. It's just a lot easier to have two people while setting posts. All right, I'm gonna run in here and get a bag of ice and then jump in the truck and we'll be on our way. Got a whole pile of concrete. I plan on putting five bags per hole. May not be able to get five bags depending on how deep I can get the hole. I'm gonna get it five, if not six foot deep. Uh, but I plan on putting five. I got enough for five bags for each hole. If I only get four, that's fine. I'll have some extra, but covered it with tarp just so the moisture, cause I got this stuff a couple days ago and uh, just in case it rained or moisture or whatever, I didn't want to ruin the concrete. Got a water tank over here. Then I got eight four and a half inch posts cut to, they're a little over 10 foot long. I think they're like 10 and a half roughly. So I'm gonna make the top of the post roughly five foot, probably a little bit less. I'm gonna do my best to dig deeper and deeper and put all my extra in the ground. That way it's a lot more sturdier of a fence, if you will. Just stopped and got a little fuel, topped off the truck. Go ahead and put on some sunscreen before I forget. I only have eight posts. Whew. I only have eight posts to set, but be out in the sun a little bit. Uh, you know, laying out the fence. You know, laying it out, seeing where our holes are going to be how long our gate's gonna be, how wide our opening. I mean, I know it's 16 foot, but uh, just gotta get some, you know, gotta get it all dialed in right there on site. But anyway, got some fuel. Uh, this thing reminds me of pulling the camper. You know, I got, I don't know what I'm weighing. I, I weighed the concrete at 80 pounds times 52. It was like 3,000, 3,500 pounds or something. 80 times 42, 3,360 pounds. So, and then plus the water whatever the water weighs and it's all right there on front i'm hoping once we get uh skid steer on here it'll like level it out obviously it'll be heavier but skid steer probably weighs seven or nine thousand i can't remember which one he said i'm getting compared to how much it weighs but anyway i love it i love it i get just excited i must just like pulling trailers maybe that's why i like Maybe that's one of the reasons I get excited to go on a pipeline job is because I get up in the morning, camper's all packed, and I'm hooked on, and I just, I just, it just feels good to pull a trailer. I don't know. This is like pulling the trailer, but without packing the clothes. No suitcase. I'll be back tonight.
So I got a phone call right before I got to the Loves to meet Roger, and the phone call was from the equipment place that I'm renting that skid steer from, and they said, hey, it was the driver. Hey, I'm over here at this uh, place. Uh, where you want me to drop this thing off at? I said, well, I didn't plan on you dropping it off, but I guess go ahead and drop it off since you're there, which is super handy. I just didn't want to have to pay the, de the delivery fee, which I talked to my sales guy. He's not going to charge me delivery because I didn't. We both planned on, you know, we had talked about that. So I don't know where the miscommunication was, although it is nice. I just didn't intend on that. So anyway, that's the update. Don't have to stop to get the skid steer. Roger's following me and headed straight to the job now. All right, here's what we got so far. It's an old post there. Strung a, drove a pin in the ground here, and then a pin in the ground way down yonder. Yonder, there's Rog. Say hey, Rog. Hello. <laughs> a pin in the ground way over there on the other side of the driveway. And we just ran a string line, and we measured for our gate um, on either side of the driveway. So we got a post here with a white flag everything that's white is mine post four and a half inch post ten foot over i just put it ten foot centers post right here and then uh put a spot for a 16 foot gate and an h brace on either side of the driveway and then h brace on the other end and then now me and roger are gonna come down here and measure for where the t-posts are going i'm gonna put t-post every eight foot just so it looks tighter and it's uh, a lot of people may not put t-posts but like 10 or 12 feet on like a you know long fence but here I'm gonna try to go over eight foot and uh, we're gonna go ahead and mark it we're waiting on the locating people to get here to verify because um, I don't want to dig or drive t-post in the ground uh, until I know for sure where this line is at because there's a line there and they did not mark it so well, you never know where, which way it's going after you get down there, you know?
coming right along. We got our holes popped, posts put in the holes. At least I start down here. Set these two posts first thing. First put up a string line and then set these two posts. Feels good. Just pulled in the driveway. So let's let's give a summary of what happened today. So it was a very stressful day to say the least. It is almost 8 30. Eight posts to set, digging eight holes, setting eight posts in concrete. Um, granted it is an hour, a little over an hour from the house, and I was waiting on the locate person to come verify that this line was not gonna be where we were gonna be digging. I'm just that better safe than sorry thing. The day went good after this happened. All right, so this is how it's going. Yeah, that happened. I feel like an idiot. Um, skid steer, I don't think it's quite made to lift that pallet of concrete. Um, between all the logistics and planning that I was trying to do, I did not uh, account for that, I guess. I don't know, it's a lot and I feel really stupid. But, learned a lot from it. So, there's that. But, uh, yeah, fell off the trailer. Did not get it on film. But, Roger went to get another tank and uh, we're gonna fix some, pop some holes and, and carry on. Very embarrassing, very, very embarrassing. And it's taking me the whole drive home to like build up the courage to share that. The only reason I'm sharing that, because it's super embarrassing, super embarrassing. But the only reason I'm sharing it is to help. I'm in the market of helping people, love helping people. Uh, having this YouTube channel has helped me tremendously like just open my eyes and it's, I've learned a lot from, from sharing, from the comments that you guys leave. A lot of people have shared how helpful my videos have been. So what better way than to share my mistakes so we can all learn. So that's the only reason I shared it. Didn't catch it on film. Long story short, skid steer is not big enough. I'm going to own that one. Told the rental place what I needed it for, but I didn't intend on getting a whole pile of concrete when this deal first started. And Long story short, it's it's rough. I mean, it's a rental. It definitely runs rough. It like I barely got it back on the trailer. So, so I had a lot of things going against me. But what happened was they got like a two track in their driveway. So it's like there's a bump, and I pulled up next to the road, two track road. And so this thing being on tracks, I was I was teetering, and it's got the foot pedal. Those of you that run skid steer, you know it's got the foot pedal up and down, which is very it's not as smooth unless you're like used to that's all you ever ran and i'm not an operator like i don't claim to be an operator it would have helped if i would have like had it at the house playing around with it or something getting used to it because teetering on that and then trying to get a load off that's 3600 pounds with something that's only rated for like less than 3000 i think just not not smart not good at all and anyway i tried to lift the concrete up and it all happened so quick and it 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 teetered and i lifted it up and it and instead of going 
instead of going back down real quick i got confused kind of panic mode went up and pushed the water deal off broke the water deal omg talk about embarrassing landowners right there watching me super huber and his wife thank you so much for being tolerant and patient with old austin i apologize but they're so super sweet and helped me and Raj all day. Raj got me out of a bind. He went and got another tank. He knew right where to get one. I just can't say thank you enough for those of you that were helping me today. Shouldn't have been that stressful. One little stressful thing like that should not have. Very simple day, but one little thing to go wrong, wrong like that spiked my stress. And then on top of that, like I said, we were waiting on the guy to show up to mark the line. So that made it last a little bit longer. And it was hot, you know, felt like 100 degrees all day. But I'm thankful for everybody that was there helping me. Hubert, his wife, Roger, thank you so much. I think the advice for this week needs to be how important help is, and good help with that, but <clears throat> I've always known that, but I really know it, know it at times like this, because, like, when you're doing a whole project, you know, when you're doing more than just welding, there's a lot more that goes into it. Like, I planned, you know, I talked about logistics last week. And I planned and planned and tried to make sure I had all my stuff prepared so like no matter how much you plan, something can still go wrong. And if it wasn't for that help that I had, I wouldn't have got them post set today, even though we went over. But um, I say over, I mean, I don't have to quit at five, but you know, I plan on getting done at five, if not three o'clock or something, you know, with no more than we had to do. That's real world versus textbook or whatever, you know, the real world learning curve is a huge learning curve. And I definitely learned from it. That's what I told Hubert. <laughs> Or actually, I think he brought it up. He's like, yeah, but you learned. And I said, yeah, you're right, I did. You know, I hate to learn that way, but it's definitely learned. Moral to the story, hire help when you need it and, and appreciate it. You know, take care of them, you know. And I can get more into this in the future because I've learned a lot about, like, hiring, you know, the right people, people that are the, the ones for the job. I mean, you want to get good help, you know. That's going to help you long term. But, but just any help at all and showing the appreciation for that help goes a long way because... I don't know, it's just kind of like being vulnerable, you know, this, I, hey, I mean, like, this is worse than sharing that I busted a test, guys, like, just so you know, like, I, embarrassed, don't like it, you know, I'm trying to do a customer good job, it's unprofessional, if it happened out here, whatever, you know, but I'm trying, just met the customer in person for the first time, and that kind of thing happens, it's just super embarrassing, but, uh, anyway, just being, being vulnerable and accepting the fact that you need help and hiring help. And, and taking care of them, you know? Just figure that in because you cannot do it alone. And just realizing that, owning that. So that's my advice. So in the next video, I'm gonna build a custom gate to match the opening that we made and then pre-cut all my cross members and blow holes in the pipe whenever I go out there. So we'll probably be here in the shop for next week's video, building the gate and cutting post. But the main subject will probably be building the gate. Thank you all for watching. We'll see y'all next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.